continuum for me actually means that one would expect that a person with ALS always, if they live long enough, would always de develop um, frontotemporal dementia or vice versa, a patient with FTD should develop ALS if they live long enough. Um, and spectrum would be that they have something in common, but um, there's still some, some differences. And I think from the, um, on different levels of, of um, um, clinical, genetically and, and neuropathic, there's evidence that there's actually more a spectrum than a continuum. Though we have definitely there are patients who have present with pure ALS and they never develop um, signs of, of cognitive impairment and vice versa, there are pure FTD patients. Um, we have some genes actually which all um, end up with TDP pathology, but actually some of th the vast majority of them, though the only exception is C9 of all the others, they either develop with ALS phenotype or FTD phenotype. I think that also tells us that there um, might be actually different pathways which lead to TDP accumulation, but there have to be triggers which are responsible for this selective vulnerability, which means that on for clinically ALS, primarily the primary motor system, these neurons are affected, and for FTD, other cortical um, neurons are the most vulnerable for this failure of a specific pathway. And actually, we, we also address that a little bit too in, in a clinical, um, in a prospective clinical pathological correlation study where we we looked at ALS patients um, and stratified them whether they develop cognitive impairment or, or frontotemporal dementia and compared the clinical features and, and um, the neuropathology so they all came to autopsy after, after their death. Um, and what we found is actually that in a, con in a continuum, actually you would expect that patients with ALS plus frontotemporal dementia, they should be, have a longer disease duration which is actually the opposite of the case, so this is also what other people found, where they have a shorter disease duration. I think this is something which also argues against that. And actually also from the neuropathological findings, we did not find a continuum from non-impaired to cognitive impaired to FTD. Um, and this also speaks against the continuum hypothesis in my interpretation. I think what is important for a clinician is to be aware that ALS patients can present with um, cognitive impairment or frontotemporal dementia and vice versa um, and to be aware of that fact which I think this might um, make specific treatment strategies necessary and I think this is something one has to be aware. Obviously this whole discussion what we have, have a lot of scientific um, implications to find out actually what are these modifiers which trigger that a patient develops ALS or FTD um, and I think this might be so getting insights into that might also eventually lead to novel treatment targets um, in the future.